2019 WAPT News presents A Season to Remember with Megan West and Josh Jackson. Feel the roar of the crowd. Hear the clanging of the cowbell. Witness the buzzer beaters. Oh, she got it! She got it! An unprecedented dominance. What's next for these extraordinary women who've given us a season to remember? Well, it was the best season for MSU women's basketball in program history, ending with a national championship appearance. Thanks for tuning in to a season to remember. Good evening, I'm Megan West. And I'm Josh Jackson. The Bulldogs cruise through the regular season, as well as the opening rounds of the NCAA tournament. Not until the final four did the drama reach its apex. A screenwriter could not have written a better script. Trailing Louisville late in the final quarter of the semis, Mississippi State needed a miracle to punch its ticket to the national championship. Five to get off a shot. Just one year prior, the drama shot in Dallas had a fairy tale ending. She got it! She got it! Morgan Williams' shot ended UConn's 111 game winning streak and started MSU's rise to fame. Fast forward to March 30th, 2018. Seven seconds left in regulation. Roshonda Johnson tied the game with a clutch three. State picked up an overtime win and national championship berth. In my head, I was just like, yeah, like, you know, this is what we built for. Two days later, Mississippi State in the title game. Dominant in the first half, MSU held Notre Dame to just three points in the second quarter, the fewest in a regulation period in Final Four history. But after intermission, the Fighting Irish erased a 13-point halftime deficit and found themselves tied with MSU with just three seconds left. Ogumbawale. An extra frame wasn't needed. Arike Ogumbawale stunned MSU fans, lifting her team to a 61-58 win and national championship. She's a great player. She made a great shot, and they just made one more shot than we did. Yeah, Megan, a Goomba Wally shot a heartbreaker for all of Maroon and White Nation. Oh, man, Josh, it was tough to watch. But as we walked down memory lane, yeah, there was plenty to celebrate during this historic season. Sports anchor Ashley Shamity has more. It wasn't the ending they had hoped for, but a 37-2 overall record for the Mississippi State Bulldogs and a second straight national championship appearance, most definitely something to remember. To 26-0. Win after win after win. 30 straight to be exact. It just doesn't get any better than that, y'all. And that's pretty much how most of the season went for the Bulldogs. They won 30 straight games. A first in the SEC since Tennessee did it back in 1998. A perfect 18-0 home record and 16-0 conference mark. The Bulldogs claiming the SEC regular season title. It just found the hours. So we just tried to enjoy the moment. We trusted in our coach and we believed in what he said, so he got it done. MSU continued to sell out Humphrey Coliseum. They cruised through the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament and then the Kansas City Regional making it to the final four for a second straight season. They have now lived all year with the bullseye on their back. One more game stood in the way of the Bulldogs having another shot at that national championship. And finally, after defeating the Cardinals in overtime, one year later, Mississippi State would get their chance at the national title. wasn't the outcome they expected and for the seniors of the team it was one last chance to bring Mississippi State something they've never had before a national championship. It was a heck of a game um, just wasn't meant to be that night but there'll be others. Yeah. And Coach Schaefer I know not just the state of Mississippi but the fans you've gained along the way will be waiting for that day. Oh, thanks, Ashley. So hard to watch that. But, you know, when you think about it, you can't throw away a record-breaking season over losing a national championship in such heartbreaking fashion. Oh, no doubt about it. And joining us now, basketball analyst, Coach Tamika Reed. Thanks for joining us, by no the problem. way. No problem. Thank you for having me. You've been all over the state. You do a lot of recruiting. 
Mississippi State women's basketball just this year, 37-2. How has it changed women's basketball here in the Magnolia State? Mississippi State women's basketball team has validated the talent we have here mm -hmm. in our own state. They have also um, allowed our players to see once you graduate from high school, you don't have to leave to be successful. Mm -hmm. You can stay right here and help your hometown win a championship. Um, they have also allowed our players to see firsthand experience what it takes to be that type of player, the skill set, the IQ to play at that level. Mm -hmm. And so now our players are preparing more. They're working harder to be better on the basketball court, to be better players at that next level. No doubt. And showing up on the national stage as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And speaking as a coach, how vital is that fan support? Of course, we saw Humphrey Coliseum sold out in the first two rounds. The, the fan support is, is, it means a lot. I mean, you have people rallying behind you, encouraging you. When you have a down moment, they're encouraging you to pick it back up. They're motivating you. It's really important. And like I said, when you have players preparing for that level, you increase the fan base, you increase the support, and you increase the revenue for women's basketball. I like what you mentioned about staying at home. Victoria Vivian, she could have, any school in America, you know, UConn. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame, she could have been at Notre Dame, but she decided to stay home and she got her team to a national championship there. Uh, fell just short. But when we look forward here, you've you got a lot of talent there. Of course, Naya Tate, Tierra McCowan coming back. What, what does the future look like, would you say, for MSU? Well, MSU, the future is really bright. The players coming back are, are going to be as ready as before. They had an opportunity, Naya Tay had an opportunity to sit back and watch and get better. And now she's gonna be ready to just step right into that, that segment and just help the team be productive on the floor. I've gotta ask you this question here because you're a former post player and talking about basketball. Tierra McCall, have you ever seen a player that dominant? I mean, she broke a final four Incredible. record for rebound. Yeah, yeah Tierra is amazing. Mm -hmm. To see where she started and where she is now, she's been phenomenal. Whoever's working her out and developing her skills are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, she's done a great job this year. She went from six points uh, her first season, six points her second season, till 18 points now. I mean, she's been playing extremely well, and she's owning her, her presence. Mm -hmm. She's been a dominant figure on the inside, defensively and offensively. No doubt about it. Definitely a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. All Absolutely. right, bright future for Mississippi State. Thanks so much, Coach Reed. No problem. And Thank speaking you. of that future, we're going to talk over to Rob Jay, who has more on the future of MSU basketball. Some good talent returning, Rob. Absolutely, Josh. Just like Coach Reed said, the cupboard is not bare for Mississippi State at all. 6'7 center Tierra McCowan takes over as the face of the franchise, but she is not alone. Now, she emerged in the NCAA tournament as one of the most dominant post players, as you guys mentioned, in women's college basketball. Next season, she'll help help from Terry alum Naya Tate, along with all-star guard Maya Taylor. Despite the loss, Mississippi State has some pieces to work with next season, and Tierra even said, this is my team, and I will make sure that they are ready, Josh. <laughs> I love that. You know, they do have some pieces to work with, Rob. It won't be easy, though, with four of the starting five not returning, Josh. That's right. Those four seniors moving on. Sports anchor Ashley Shamini has more on what's next for the winningest class in MSU history. For the seniors who captured the hearts of so many and helped lead the Bulldogs to historic seasons these past four years, you can't help but ask, what's next? For some, it's the WNBA, or a place overseas to play, while for others, like Blair Schaefer, who spent a summer interning with Kevin Frazier, co-host of Entertainment Tonight, but maybe more so, known as a former ESPN host and basketball player, Schaefer may take a different route to continue to be involved in sports post-Mississippi State. He's making some phone calls, and uh, we're going to see what happens. So hopefully, you know, something will open up and I can stay in the sports world somehow. Hopefully I go pro or I go overseas. That's the plan. With the loss of four starting seniors, it's no doubt going to hurt. But with head coach Vic Schaefer and center Tierra McCowan returning, among others, there's still lots to look forward to for the Bulldogs. All right, also worth mentioning, senior and leading scorer Victoria Vivians has received an invitation to the WNBA draft in New York City. Make that money. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, speaking of Vivians, on the other side of the break, we head out to Carthage for a family conversation with the All-American. Welcome back. You know, MSU's fame all started with the shot versus UConn in last year's Final Four. The shot heard around the world, as it would later be called. That bucket by Morgan William with just five seconds to go in overtime sent the Mississippi State women to the national championship for the first time in program history. Josh is standing by with more on the play. No one will forget, Josh. That's right, making time for basketball literacy. We're calling this one read and write catchy name there, right? <laughs> 
Coach Tamika Reed with us again from Hines and Coach. I, I was at that game last year. You were there as well. Morgan William, that shot, I will never forget it. But what I'd like for you to do, can you break it down for us? Walk us through that play and how they were able to make that shot and, and get to that national championship game. Now, we will roll video of it here okay. after you finish, but break it, break it down for us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They start in the full length of the court. Mm -hmm. You had Roberts out of bounds inbound the ball. Mm -hmm. You had Morgan here, um, and then they had Morgan face guarded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so double zero was here, Billingham. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they had to pass the ball in to her. They kept face guarding Morgan. You had Blair here in the, in the corner, and you had Tierra on the block right here. So as we came up the floor right here, they were still face guarding Morgan. Mm -hmm. Morgan went to the free throw line area, three came in. They did not want to give the ball to three. They did. So Morgan told her to go to the wing. Double zero drove to the wing. Morgan popped out. Mm -hmm. Morgan was here at the free throw line. She popped out. Double zero passed her the ball here. Morgan took three hard dribbles to this elbow and knock this shot Let down. it rip. Let's roll some video of it. I will never forget it. I remember just leaving her hand there. One of the most exciting moments in my career as a journalist. I mean, it, it was just great. Look at it. Just just, just take a look. Yeah. For arguably the biggest moment for Mississippi State uh, in program history. Thanks so much, Coach Reed. Love seeing her break it down like that. Let's talk about Victoria Vivian. So she is the most decorated athlete in Mississippi State sports history. With her career at State now over, she has her sights set on the WNBA. That's right. 16 WAPT's Marcus Hunter caught up with Vivian's at her family home as she reflected on her time as a Bulldog. After graduating high school as the state's all-time leading scorer, Victoria Vivians could have gone to any college in the country, but she chose to stay close to home. Mississippi State is like 45 minutes away from my grandma's house, an hour from my house, so I feel like it was closer for families to come watch. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big family person, and it would be amazing if I just had my family at every game. The Bulldogs' good geographical location turned out to be the shot in the arm of Vic Schaefer's program needed. And came in, I told the coach that I wanted to play, and I wasn't afraid of stepping out there. And he believed in it, he put me out there, and ever since then, I've just been doing great things. In her first year, MSU went from 13th in the SEC to third. By the time she was a senior, she had won so many games and broken so many records, she was arguably the most recognizable face on campus. Before her senior season began, Vivians ran for MSU homecoming queen. She said she ran to show that there was more to her than just basketball. I had to actually go out there and campaign, talk to different fraternities, talk to the band, talk to just different like communities of the campus and it was actually fun. Mm -hmm. I was nervous too as well, but I didn't know, I didn't think I was going to win. She won in a landslide victory, taking more than 70% of the vote. Queen V would go on to lead the Lady Dogs to an undefeated regular season, their first ever SEC championship, and a second straight trip to the national title game. As we know, it did not end the way they would have liked, and Vivian says that a last second shot by Akiri Agumbawale to win the game is one she still replays in her head almost a week later. And then when I seen left her hand, I mean, she was very all balanced. Like, I contested, like, the shot, like, really hard. So I was like, I hope it's good enough. And it wasn't good enough. And when it never net, like, yeah. hey. It was uh, disappointing, mainly for me, for her, because I know she won't have another chance to do that in college. That was her last chance to do that in college. So I hit it for her, but she's going to be all right. With college behind her, Vivian's now has her sights set on the WNBA draft. Projected as a top eight pick, Vivian says she is looking forward to being able to focus just on basketball. Her dad says he is proud his little girl is living out her dreams. That's what she wanted. It's a common truth. So anytime your kids do the things that they want to do, is good things, I'm always proud of it. I'm just going to be amazing, you know? You don't have to go to school anymore. I graduated in May. Just going out there and just playing ball. Something I always want to do was just play ball. The WNBA draft is Thursday. Marcus Hunter, 16 WAPT News. You know, I've definitely got to commend Victoria after yeah. that hard loss. They're a class act in the locker mm -hmm. room. Answer questions. I really have to commend her and, and also her parents for, for raising her the right way. By the way, she will be in the Big Apple for the draft. Yeah, and as Marcus <laughs> told us, if you need us to tell you, she is a projected first round choice. Man. On the other side of the break, the story of senior guard Roshunda Johnson and her son, Malachi. MSU senior guard Roshunda Johnson helped lead MSU to its best season in program history, and she did it balancing basketball with raising a child.
The day after practice, I was really sick, and I told my trainer, I said, I think I need to go get, like, a test or something. First thing, I called my mom. I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. Like, that was the first thing I said, and I just got really silent on the phone, and my mom was just like, what you want to do? Have you talked to the coaches? We wanted to be there for her and love her and um, be a great support system for her. I did think about going home, but after talking to Coach Schaefer and I felt like he was behind me 100% and my family was behind me and everybody else was behind me, I knew that I still had a chance, but it was going to be me having to work 10 times harder to get back to where I was. Yay, America. I think any time you have children, I think it really grounds you and it brings a real clarity to what's important. Malachi is number one. And you know what? He's number one to me, too. Him just coming in, it just brightens your day. Even when you're down, he comes to you and he looks at you and you're just like, how can you be sad Like when he's looking at you? He called me T.T. Tori. It's pretty amazing just to see him grow into the little boy he is now and knowing that it came from my teammate. Rose's commitment is unbelievable. Not too many people can be a mother, let alone be a student athlete. I've never seen a mother so determined other than my own. I don't see how she does. She goes to school, she plays basketball, she takes care of her son. It's undescribable. You can't describe anything like that. It's just a woman, a grown woman. <laughs> Nobody multitasks quite like a mom. Johnson finished the season averaging 11 points per game. Her last second three-pointer in regulation versus Louisville in the Final Four helped propel Mississippi State to that national championship. Oh, my, what an awesome story there. You know, and she is a fan favorite. And speaking of fans, Lee Shu has some loyal ones. Photojournalist Lannis Leggett captured their Final Four sight and sounds. <laughs> Columbus, Ohio to support our girls. We've been watching them all season and we're ready to cheer them on to victory. Now this morning when I came down for the worship service, my daughter Tori, my youngest daughter, she said, she said, Dad, you sure are in a good mood today. <laughs> like I'm not in a good mood all the time. <laughs> I said, well, baby, we're going to win a national championship today. And get this for fan support. Humphrey Coliseum, you heard Megan say it earlier, was the only host site in the country that sold out for this year's opening rounds of the NCAA tournament. Don't go anywhere. When we return MSU basketball, well, on a lighter note, we have some fun with the Final Four. So playing sports should always be fun. That's right. And nobody has more fun broadcasting <laughs> fun work than Rob J. I understand, That's Rob, there's this thing called Rob's rant that we've got going on. But uh -huh. I, I, we need you to behave, Rob. I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Because you really can. I mean, you know, they were, they were such a good team all year long. You know, the losses uh, Mississippi State suffered to Notre Dame was perhaps the most heartbreaking in the annals of Mississippi sports history. Josh Jackson, our sports director here, had the difficult task of interviewing the players oh, after the game in the locker room. Very that job in yeah. itself deserves some combat pay. Ogumbawale <laughs> for the win. It was the shot heard around the world. Enrique Ogumbawale wins the national championship for Notre Dame. Notre Dame's three-pointer that ended Mississippi State's season was followed by the interview seen around the area. For you personally, um, have you ever suffered a defeat or more challenging than this one? Yeah, last year in the same game. Tierra McCowan wasn't having any part of this interview with 16 WAPT sports director Josh Jackson, which begs the question, should we simply leave players and coaches alone following tough losses or even losses at all? You let them get into the, uh, the locker room, cool down a little bit, 10, 15 minutes. 
that's long enough. I, I think so. Because, you know, you got media members, you got a job to do, you know? Even with a shot like that. I think so. Coaches and players are given a 10-minute cooling off period following games, but as was the case with Big T, that was not enough. Well, what was Coach Vic Schaefer's message to you all when you made it to the locker room? No comment. Just what would your message be for, for the younger uh, underclassmen? I'll have my team ready, don't worry. Motivate for next year, I assume. Yep. So my advice is simply leave them alone after a loss. I mean, like I did, you know who. He thinks I'm a sorry coach. Uh, just like to let you know, you know, if, uh, if they want my job, they can come after it. They know where my office is. Rob J. He didn't have to do Tony Hughes. <laughs> right. <laughs> no one has more fun than Rob J. Though. That's but true. I, I have to say, Megan, yes. in that locker room, mm -hmm. if you've ever played sports, you understand when you lose a game like that on national stage, national championship, it is tough. So, Tierra McCowan, sure. I understand, you know, competitive nature, you want to win, yeah. all that good stuff. Blair Schaefer, uh, you know, and, and it's my job as a journalist to ask those questions and understand that it's a sensitive matter as well. So It is. It, but you know what? You said it earlier. Those women are class acts. Mm -hmm top to bottom, I have a two-year-old daughter, I woke her up mm -hmm. to watch the game because I wanted her to see women like this excelling on a national stage. Mm -hmm. So many different kinds of women, all incredible role models for young girls. No doubt about it, just all over the place. Women's basketball, as popular, if mm -hmm. not more than men's basketball in the state of Mississippi, you're not selling out at Humphrey Coliseum for nothing against Ben Howell and his crew, those men, but those women on a national stage in Ohio, yes. there were fans, yeah. they, they were from Canton and Columbus, Ohio, saying, I am a Mississippi State fan. That speaks volumes. It does. I want to see the impact that this has on girls that are in elementary school, middle school today, and see what we see a few years from now from them, to see what they remembered about watching these two seasons specifically. No know? doubt about it. Remarkable season it was. Yeah, it sure was. Thank you so much for watching us. The Bulldogs finishing up undefeated at home. Top seeded for the very first time. So much to be proud of on this season. To remember.